We are doing homework problems from section chapter 3, section 2, number 5, 11, 13, and 15. So this is the section where from a graph you need to be able to draw the derivative and you need to know that the derivative does not exist in three situations. The first is where you have a discontinuity, either a whole, a jump, or an infinite discontinuity. The second case will be when you have a sharp point. Because remember, the derivative is the limit, and so as you approach from each direction, the slopes must be the same. And a sharp point, that won't happen. And then the third one is if your tangent line is vertical, because the slope of a vertical line is undefined. So that's what's going on. So in this problem, we want to draw the derivative function. So I'm going to extend these lines down because they aren't there. So we'll do negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. And what is the derivative? So I'm going to find the derivative at certain points. I'm going to mark that down at multiple points. And then I'm going to draw the derivative in that fuchsia color. So the derivative is the slope of the tangent line at that point. So I'm going to draw a tangent line. And I'm going to put that tangent right at that point there. But if you look, the slope of that line is negative 1. So the slope of that tangent line is negative 1. So at this point right here, I'll do it in a different color. At that x value, the slope of the tangent line is negative 1, so the derivative should be down here at negative 1. So I will put a dot there at negative 1. Now let me move this tangent line to the next point right there. Now as you can see, let me fix this a little bit. It looks like that tangent line right here, I should do a different color. What am I doing, Yoshida? Let me get rid of this. Let me do a different color so you can see it. I will do it in this beautiful orangish color. Whoa, that didn't work out quite like I expected. Let go, right there. So I'm going to do the tangent line at that second blue dot there. And the slope of that yellow line is negative 1 again. So at that point, that tangent line has a slope of negative 1. So the derivative at that x value should be negative 1. So I'm going to put a dot there. And I think you start to see the point that I'm going to make. All these points on that line, the slope of the tangent line are the same. It's always negative 1. So even at that x value, the slope of the tangent is negative 1. So the derivative at that x value should be negative 1. Now it should be pretty abundantly clear that all the way across the slope at any point here is negative 1, so the derivative will be negative 1. And at the ends, I have hollow dots. Why the hollow dots? Because this is a sharp point and the derivative does not exist there. So therefore, I don't want the derivative to exist, so I do put that hollow dot. Let me redraw that because it is not that pretty. If I connect these, there we go. That one on top is a little bit high. So that is the graph of the derivative. Now at this end point here, it's not continuous. It doesn't have a left side. So the slope from the left and right can't be the same. So that's why I'm going to have a hollow dot there. Now, as we go through this and you look at all these points, I think you're going to realize something again. If I do tangent lines at all those points, all of them have the same slope. Anywhere on this line, the slope of the tangent lines will be 1. So for all those x values, the derivative will always be 1. And again, why do I have a hollow dot there and a hollow dot there? Because at this sharp point, the derivative does not exist. 
And at that sharp point, the derivative does not exist. So when I graph the derivative in pink, it better not exist at those points. So to understand, if the black graph is f of x, the pink graph is f prime of x. Now as we go through this process along this line, if I take the slope of the tangent line at all those points, I think it'll be pretty clear that all of them have the same slope, every tangent line. Everywhere on this line, the tangent line is going to have a slope of negative 1. Therefore, the derivative everywhere from 0 to 2 is going to have a slope of negative 1. In other words, the derivative will be negative 1 in that whole region. And then I have one more region to do. And that's going to be all these points along that line. So I will take my tangent piece, and there we go. Every point along this line has the same tangent line. So the slope of that is going to be 1 third. Why 1 third? If you look, the rise is 1, and the run is 3 spaces, 1, 2, 3 to 1. So the rise over run is 1 third. So if we graph the derivative, the derivative will be from there to there, one-third. And that is the graph of the derivative of number five. So key connections, the slope of the tangent line gives you the derivative, value of the derivative. And at sharp points, the derivative does not exist. Here's another one. When I have a weird shape like this, I look for very specific points. The first point I look for is anywhere where the derivative is zero. And to me, it looks right there. If I were to draw a tangent line, can I grab the other one? No, I'll just do a new one. If I were to draw the tangent line, there it is. At that point, to me, the slope is zero. So the derivative at this x value should be zero. So I'm going to put a dot, zero. That's my graph of the derivative at this x value. It is 0 because the slope of that is 0. Again, I'll call this f of x. And this fuchsia line will be f prime of x. Now, I'm going to pick some points and see what happens. So I'm going to check out that point, that point, and that point and see if we can see a trend on these slopes. So let me try to get a tangent line there. That looks pretty close. Now, you're going to have to guess the slope of that. You don't have to be perfect. We're just doing approximations. So if we look at that, what's the rise and run? To me, that's 3 times longer. So 1 over 3. So to me, the derivative is 1 over 3. I'm just going to pick a scale here because they don't give us one. You get to choose. And so at this value of x, I think the derivative is one-third, so I'm going to put a dot right there, about one-third. All right, I'm going to continue this process. I'm going to move this over here, and look, it's getting steeper. There's my tangent line. And my best guess for the slope there, I'm looking one. Those look about the same length to me. So at this x value, this x value, my derivative should be 1, so I should be up here. So I'm going to put a dot right there for my derivative. And I'm going to test this last point. So I'm going to move my tangent line up here, and we can see it's getting steeper. So we have to approximate that slope. So we look at that, and we look at that. To me, there's two high and one wide. The slope is two. So for that value of x here, I need to put a dot at two, which is up here. So my derivative is two. So this appears to be my derivative. But now I have to do that to the left side also. So I'm going to pick a few random points. I'll pick this one here. Let me move my tangent line over there. 
and I need to change that slope. That looks pretty good to me. So what is that slope? Again, you have to estimate to the best of your ability. To me, that's twice as long. There's two pieces. So the slope is one half. So at that value of x right here, that value, I want to put a plot at one half, which to me is around there. So let me erase this. Oh, I no, I didn't want to erase my tangent line. Let me erase these pieces here. Okay, so now I want to test another point. Let's test that point there. So let's grab our tangent line and move it over here and it's steeper. That looks pretty close, not perfect. And again, we need to estimate the slope at that point. Whoa, 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 Yoshida, what happened? Okay, let's try that again. Now, it may not be, it may be bigger than one. I'm just guessing one as an approximation. So at this value of x here, it's going to be one for the derivative. So I'm going to put a dot at one. And let me do one more test point way down here. So let me erase that stuff. And let me move this thing here. And it's steeper. I'm going to approximate the slope of that. I don't know. It looks like two spaces there and one the slope of two. So to me, at this x value, the, the derivative is two. So I'll plot the derivative here. And I will look like that. So that is my approximate derivative of that function. Now that you know more about calculus, this looks like some type of an x cubed. It's not centered at the right place. But we know the derivative of x cubed is 3x squared, a parabola. So looking back on this, well, if, we're, if, if we haven't looked at this yet, clearly you don't know what's going on with what I just did. Or maybe you do. We probably took the derivative of x cubed at some time. It's 3x squared. So it makes sense that the derivative would look like a parabola. So that's my observation on that. That is number 11. 13, wow. I'm not looking forward to this one. This looks like a lot of work. I'll go negative one there, negative two there, one there, two there. I'll prob I'm, I'm gonna do a couple sections and I'll start to move faster. Hopefully you're getting the hang of these. I'm gonna find the slope at a few places, like right there, right there, and then right, I'll do those places. Let me draw my slopometer. Here's my slopometer right there. Ooh, pretty good slopometer. Nope. Yeah. So I'm going to move this right here and then wow, that's very steep. Very. I don't know if I can get it like I want. It's probably it's really steep. It's very hard to estimate the slope of that. I just know it's very steep negative slope. How do you estimate that? I don't know. It's just big. It is a big negative slope. How much bigger is that than that? I don't know. Is there like seven of those? And it's a negative slope, so like negative seven? It's just a big negative number. So I'm going to put something way down here. It's just big negative. Now, as I move my slope a meter to my next point, you can see it's not as big. It's still big, but not as big. So I'm just going to move it a little higher, but I don't know where. It's just not as big. And then I move my slope a meter. Now, that's not an official word. I just made that up. Hopefully, you understand that, guys and gals. To me, that looks like a slope of negative 1. I can, I can live with that. That looks like, yeah about rise and run about the same negative one so I will put a derivative at that point at negative one and then I will move it here that looks pretty close that's a very small slope 
you look at the rise and the run, that run to me is four times bigger. That's one to four to me. So that's gonna be a negative one fourth slope. Pretty small. So at that point, I'm gonna make my slope pretty small. And then at the last one, this one, that is near zero. It's negative slightly. It's a small negative, but it's close to zero. So at that point, I'm going to get really close to zero. So there's my graph. Interesting. Now, to speed this process up, I'm just going to talk a little bit here. Let's look for other zero slopes. To me, right around there, the slope is zero. Do you see that? So at that point, I'm going to make my derivative zero. Now, as I move this way, it's negative slope. Bigger negative, bigger negative, bigger negative. Those slopes are getting bigger and bigger negative. Hopefully that is making sense. So let me draw it with green. So that's like a flat tangent line, a negative, bigger negative, and bigger negative. It just keeps getting bigger and bigger negative. So I'm gonna have the derivative go like that. But let's look at the other side. Here, it's a positive slope, it's very steep. Big positive slope, big derivative positive. Smaller slope, still positive. Smaller slope, still positive. So it goes from really big and gets smaller. So out here, it's really big, but as we move to the right, it gets smaller and smaller until it gets to zero there. And then we'll look at this last section. Look at the slope there. That looks like a negative one. Bigger negative, bigger negative. So it starts at negative one and just keeps on getting bigger negative as I move to the right. So it starts like maybe a negative one and just keeps getting bigger negative as I move right. That's what the graph of the derivative should be close to. Not exact, but you don't have to be perfect. Just as long as you have an understanding of that. And we have one more to go. So what is the concept here? Continuity. Where is this not continuous? Well, at one, it's not continuous because you have a jump discontinuity. The limit from the left does not equal the limit from the right. That is a jump discontinuity at one. I don't see any other places where there's a hole or a jump or vertical asymptote. So that's my only discontinuity. Part B, so that's the answer there. Find the values where it's not differentiable. Again, you need to know the three types of situations where it's not differentiable, a function. A discontinuity, a sharp point, or a vertical tangent line. Well, here is a discontinuity, it's a jump. Here is a sharp point. So those are two, at one and two, it's not differentiable. And you see those answers. And now we have to sketch the graph and we're gonna do the same process that we've been doing. And I need to extend my lines because they don't give us a big enough graph. Let me scoot that over. Let me get some uh, marker lines, negative one, negative two. And we will, for this one, I'm going to walk you through the process and not draw all the lines. So let's talk. At this point here, that tangent line looks like it's flat, zero. So my derivative at that point should be zero. Now, as you see, as I move to the right, the slope gets bigger and bigger and bigger. So from here to here, the slope continues to increase. And there, that's pretty close to the slope of one. What's weird about this is the derivative might almost follow the original curve. It's pretty close. I put a hole there because the derivative does not exist at one, therefore I better not graph the derivative there. Now as we look here, it looks like the slope is zero and it becomes negative, bigger negative, bigger negative. So it starts out as zero here and the slope keeps getting bigger negative. So it starts out at zero and it gets bigger and bigger negative. 
well that's not supposed to be a straight line I don't know if it's curved that way it's hard to tell it doesn't have as long as you're on the right track I'm happy and then there's a sharp point so I better not have the derivative exist at that sharp point so I put an open circle and now you should see the slope everywhere on this line is the same the tangent lines are all the same and the slope looks like about 2 up 2 over 1 so the derivative will be 2 everywhere on that region so there is my graph of derivative and that's it for the examples hope that helps out I'll see you guys later